Let's talk about why an architect would use Midjourney. There's a couple different reasons. Reason number one, you can generate inspiration in seconds. Reason number two, you can generate design options. This is the monochrome option. This is the modern option. And then lastly, generate different styles things that you might not be comfortable with. This is a contemporary style, this is traditional, and you're able to generate these options in seconds. But you can only do this if you understand how to prompt correctly. So I'm gonna show you all the tips you need to know to use Midjourney properly. Let's get started. So let's say we've been hired to design a house or a space. Generally what people do when they're new to Midjourney and prompting, they'll go over here and they'll type the thing they want. So if I'm designing a house, they'd probably type a house and then send it off. But what they don't realize is they're always going to get unsatisfying results because it's not specific enough. There's no details. It's not talking about the style or the location or anything the client might be interested in. So instead we get these super generic images that we wouldn't show to a client, right? This looks like a haunted house, right? This doesn't look like anything new and this looks like a painting. So this isn't too specific to our client's needs. So what I recommend is I have a formula here for you to use. I drop it in right here and I'm gonna break down how you can create better prompts using this. So the first thing you need to talk about is the type of image style or the medium. Are we talking about a photo? Are we talking about a painting, a watercolor, illustration? That's what you would put here. The next thing is the thing you're designing. Is it a house? Is it a living room? Is it a piece of furniture? The next thing is the style or the design type. Is it modern, contemporary, traditional? Then the next thing that you can do is an artist or designer reference. So do we want it to be a painting in the style of Van Gogh or do we want it designed by Louis Kahn, the architect? Then there's setting. Is it in a forest, New York City, London, by a beach? Then time of day or lighting conditions. Is it a bright sunny day? Is it gloomy? That's what you put here. So now let's fill it out together. So I'm gonna erase this and let's say I want a photo. I want something realistic, right? And I also want a modern house in shingle style. So I'm gonna remove the artist or designer reference because the material is actually enough for this. So I'm gonna say a photo of a modern shingle style house and now it's asking for a setting and a time of day and we'll say by the beach on a bright sunny day and so if you've prompted it in the past you may have put commas between keywords and the newest version of Midjourney, that being version 6.1 right now is you can actually use sentences and be as descriptive as possible it doesn't need phrases like this you used to do photo house sunny now you can just do sentences so i'm happy with this let's hit enter and see what happens so as you can see these results are so much better than this this looks like something our client would actually enjoy so i really like this style so i'm going to show you how to use this as a base reference image if you click and drag this over it's now a reference and if i go over here and use text i can now combine the text from our previous prompt and the image so anything I generate here will actually be based off of this image. So now that I've got a specific style that I like, look at this, it's almost like it's generating different views of the house. It all feels like a cohesive project. So let's say I'm a big fan of this, but I don't like the color palette. This is where you can start using design options. If I go to use, it's going to automatically put the reference image in and the prompt. But what I can do is I can actually add some colors. So let's say of a dark and gray modern shingle style. So now let's see what happens. And now you'll see we've completely changed the material palette. So this is what I mean by design options. If you add or subtract one word or even replace a word, you're gonna get something vastly different. Now let's change the time of day. So I'm gonna go to use and let's say rainy, gloomy day. And again, this is all based off of an image that we generated in mid journey together and just a bunch of words. So look at that, it's completely replaced the blue sky that we've got here and made it super gloomy. So far, we've just been using an image that we actually got from Midjourney, but if you find an image online that you really like, you can actually just drag that in here. So this is the reference image, and let's say this is what the client was actually super interested in. So now that I have this here, I'm just gonna reuse the same text, and I'm gonna swap out this text here. So let's just do I'm gonna say beige, and I'm gonna change the time of day to be a bright sunny day. And instead of saying by the beach, I'm gonna say in a suburban neighborhood. But you can see how this is an iterative process. You shouldn't just send a prompt and call it a day. You should actually continue to revise your prompt. That way you're getting something more in line with your design intent. 
This was our reference image, and these are all the images that came out of it. So these are all inspired by this one image that we got here. So this is how you can have a starting image and then expand from that with more design options. So most of the images we've been generating here, these are all squares. And so since when we do presentations, they're usually landscape, we wanna change that. So if I go over to use, that way I'm reusing the same prompts, and I go over here, I can actually change the image proportions or the aspect ratio. So I'm gonna use 16 by nine. This is the most standard ratio. And just a little pro tip, you can actually type in numbers here if you want something specific, but I find it easier to just use a slider. And then over here, we actually have some settings that might be useful. So stylization, just so you understand that, the lower the number, the more it will value the prompt over being creative. So I usually keep this around 100. If you bump this up to 500, you're going to see it be a little more creative and less focused on your prompt. And variety is those four images that come out, how close are they going to be to each other? So if I were to just crank this up to 50 and 500, and then send this off, you're gonna see what happens. We're gonna get an image that's in landscape. You see how this is already much wider than these. And all of these look very, very different from this. That's where that stylization and the variety is coming from. So if I were to go to reuse this and then lower my stylization back to 50, back to 100, we're going to get things that look a little more like our prompt, but not necessarily similar to each other. There we go. They still look very different from each other. And that's where this variety is going to come from. So I usually keep that down here to zero, unless I want more inspiration between the options. So once you have an image that you really like, let's say this one's my favorite, you can actually go and then upscale it. That way you have a higher res version of it that you can use for a presentation. So I'm just gonna hit upscale. You have a subtle and creative option. Subtle is just going to improve the overall quality. It's not gonna make too many differences. And then creative, it's going to add some more, more random details that you didn't have before. So I'll show you both. A little pro tip, you can also scroll up here and see that these are baking through. So this is our subtle upscale. We can just right click and we can save the image out. And this is our creative one. So you can see it preserves a lot of the vegetation here and the creative one it did add some more detail around here and down here. So it's going to add some, some minor details. So that's a wrap for our tutorial. I hope you found that useful. If you have ideas for other videos, please let me know. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. See you guys.